Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome, and I want to say um, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out here. Let's give them a big hand. All right, to the mothers. Thank you. And at this time, we're going to honor Mary, our mother, in the month of May, and we're going to do the crowning of Mary right now, and then after that, we'll begin the Mass, okay? the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And please be seated for the readings from the Holy Scriptures. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the 12 called together the community of disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, Select from among the se you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task. Whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert, a convert of Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased 
greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. The Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp with a ten-stringed lyre. Chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope in his kindness, to deliver them forth and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God and like living stones. Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you to have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And the stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They may stumble by disobeying the word as it is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks for God. according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. 
Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do not know him and have now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? and the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today's Gospel is one of the most profound statements ever written in Scripture. It gives us with complete clarity on who the person of Jesus is. That Jesus is indeed the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And that none of us as a human person can ever enter into heaven to be in the presence of God, our Father, except through the person of Jesus. As the way, it means that if we follow him, we are guaranteed that he's going to lay out the course for us that's going to allow us to travel from this life into eternal life and glory with God. It means that if we follow Jesus as the truth, he will never lie to us. He will always reveal to us the actual facts that we have to embrace in order for our souls to be saved so that we can live with God forever. And that when we listen to his word, we are listening to truth at its very essence. And that truth, if we heed it, will begin to set us free as a person. And he is life itself, because only he is the judge of the living and the dead. And only he can call you and I from the grave and bring us resurrection as a result of who he is, life itself. Life is not something out there. Life is a person. And the person that life is, is Jesus Christ and all those in Christ receive the life of eternity that he possesses within himself. And as a result, that means if we follow Jesus as life, he will give us the perfection of love, he will give us the perfection of beauty, he will give us the perfection of intellect, he will give us the perfection of peace, and he will make us the holiness of God. What an awesome gift Jesus is for you and I. The person of Jesus is the only person who can provide to every human being the Passover. The Passover from death to new life with God in the resurrection in eternity. There's no need for us to speculate about what our life is about or how we ensure eternal existence. Speculation has now come to an end. Instead, it has been replaced by revelation of who Jesus is. We exist now, and Jesus will give us the answer to every question that we will ever have as a person. Maybe not immediately in this life, but if we die in friendship with him, he will answer all our questions, and they will be perfect answers that will satisfy us as a person. He will explain to us in detail the purpose of our existence, why we are here to know, love, and serve God. 
and the beauty of knowing and loving serving God and becoming a child of God through the person of Jesus to be able to cry out to the Father, Abba, Father, and know that he hears our voice because of the grace of adoption Jesus won for us at Calvary. Jesus, the God-man, alone brings us the divine presence. And because he brings us the divine presence, because of his human nature, he allows us to enter into the very holiness of the Trinitarian life of God itself. Since the Father lives in him, and he in the Father, you and I, if we now choose to live in Jesus, like Jesus, we can live forever in the glory of God our Father. That is why our relationship with Jesus is pivotal. Our relationship in Jesus empowers us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's why he went back to the Father, so he could release the gift of the Father, the Holy Spirit. And as a result, once that divine life of the Spirit, which makes all things possible, enters into us, our, our, our limitations are removed. And according to God's holy word, we can do unbelievable things as a result of our relationship with Jesus. Because now, the divine lived in us. That's why he says, amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me, will do the works that I did and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. So everybody here gathered together as a Christian, if you're in that state of sanctifying grace, the Holy Spirit dwells within you and the Holy Spirit is the divine life of God. That's why you are an adopted child of God because of that gift of the Holy Spirit. And that means, like Jesus, who is God by nature, you and I get to participate in the divinity of God by grace in the person of Jesus Christ. As the early church teaches us, God became man so man could become like God by the grace of the Spirit that dwells within us because of Jesus. Think about that statement for a second. Today is Mother's Day. And I think it's important for us to reflect on where we are heading and what God is offering to us as his children to experience the power of the divine. Mary, a simple little girl in the Holy Land. Someone that everybody at that time who was powerful and great thought was a nobody. But because she was obedient to the word of God, because she opened up her heart to the lordship of her son, Jesus Christ. Because she allowed him to be her lord and savior. When she came to the end of her pilgrimage in this life, after her dormition, she was taken up into heaven, body and soul. A prototype of what awaits for all of us in glory if we follow Jesus. And once again, that verse from John 14, 12 where it says, we will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. Think about the things that Mary has done as a creature who's gone from a normal human being to a glorified human being and the divine power working through her. St. Dominic received from the Blessed Mother in the 12th century the Holy Rosary. And the Blessed Mother says, this is the weapon my son has given to you. He's using me as that instrument to deliver this good news of what God wants to have for you, to empower you, to strengthen you, so you don't lose this opportunity to experience the divine. And then at Fatima in 1917, at the last apparition, when everybody was gathered, 70,000 people, this little Jewish girl who was insignificant 2,000 years ago, because she was open to God's word, now was able to command the sun itself to spin in the sky, to irradiate gorgeous light. 70,000 people gathered seeing this event taking place. It was raining, and then all of a sudden, everything dried up like it had never rained. And the great miracle changed their hearts. A little girl, a creature of God, 
obedient to his word, now possessing the vine itself within her and able to utilize it in a way extraordinary for her son's glory. Think about this story right here about um, the battle of uh, Lepanto. In the battle of Lepanto, back in 1571, the Ottoman Empire was about to invade the island of Malta. And Malta was important because Malta would have been the staging point for the Muslims to take over all of Europe. During that century, Henry VIII murdered a bunch of his wives and left the Catholic Church. In Germany, Martin Luther left the church because of this pride. Rather than being like St. Ignatius and reform within, he allowed his arrogance to take control and he breaks away from union with the church. And so when the Muslims are about to take over Europe, the Pope begs the King of England, he begs the Germans to come and change and fight this onslaught or we were all going to be devastated and they refused to go their pride was too strong but the people in Malta with the king of Spain and with the doge of Venice they began to storm heaven by praying the rosary and being outnumbered they were granted a great victory over Islam and if that prayer to the rosary had not been said and that victory had not been secured today I would be at a mosque rather than at a church think about that the power of obedience to God's word the divine being released within us think about this one about Ted Bundy Ted Bundy who murdered all kind of people when he went to the dorm at uh, Chi Omega sorority and he slaughtered the last time the girls that he had um, murdered. When he, he goes to this last girl to murder her, he breaks into her room and she's laying on her bed sleeping. And as she's sleeping, she has her rosary in her hand. She had promised her mother that she would always say the rosary every night before she went to bed. And when Ted Bunny went into her room, this invisible force threw him out of the room and threw the knife out of his hand and he was captured. The girl is so shaken up when the police come, she says, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to a Catholic priest. And she tells the Catholic priest this miracle of grace because of the intercession of the rosary that had changed her life and saved her from being murdered. And years later, when Ted Bunny is about to be executed, guess who was the priest who went to hear his last confession? The same one that was there for the girl. And Ted Bunny asked the priest, you won't believe what happened that night. I walk into this girl's room, and all of a sudden, this unbelievable force throws me out and throws the knife out my hand. And the priest says, yes, the girl had a devotion to the Holy Rosary. The power of the Spirit was protecting her because of her fidelity to the Word of God. And think about St. John Paul II. He gave us the luminous mysteries, the mysteries of light. Some people say, why? After all these centuries, five more decades. Because it's a testament to what we need in these times. Think about the first mystery, the baptism of Jesus. How many people don't wait? aren't getting their children baptized anymore. They don't think it's that important to have the sacraments anymore. So he's given us this light, the baptism of Jesus and the rosary to inform us the, the, the vital nature of having your soul born again in grace through the waters of baptism. The second one, the wedding feast at Cana. How appropriate from all times when the very sanctity of marriage is being attacked we don't recognize the validity of being one man and one woman like it was at the wedding feast of Cana. People shocking up together rather than living according to the gods of the word. Seeing the validity of having a holy sacrament to bring them together as husband and wife. So he gave us that mission to reflect. Miracles occur when you cooperate with them. Water becomes wine when you cooperate with him. The third mystery, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Almost 25% of the people under 35 are now atheists. They need to repent. 
Or are they going to be lost? We need to reach out to them and tell them the good news of the gospel message. And so that third mystery is telling us that the body of Christ, you and I who are gathered here, we have to speak up. We have to become the voice and the heart of Jesus to those who are wayward. We need to encourage them to repent and come back to the gospel message. And then the fourth mystery, the transfiguration. God telling us what's going to happen us, to us if we faithful to him until our death. That we will have a resurrection. And like St. Uh, Philip says in chapter 3, verse 21 of Philippians, he will change our lowly bodies to inform, to conform with his glorified body. We're going to have a glorified body. We're going to be some awesome people because we would be God the Father's children. And finally, the institution of the Holy Eucharist. John 6, 54, what we're about to partake in right now. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. He's letting us know now that this sacrament, that this is the summit of our faith in this life because we are partaking of God himself, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Not just some symbol, but the holiness of the Trinity in our hands through the person of Jesus. And when we receive him into our bodies, He's getting us ready for our resurrection. He's sanctifying us. He's healing us. He's transforming us into him. And how many believe in the real presence anymore? And recognize what Jesus says in scripture, that you must eat my flesh and drink my blood if you want to have eternal life. And if you do, he promised us, I will raise him on the last day. Wow. We are so lucky to be Christians. We are so lucky to be Catholics. We are so lucky to have the sacraments and the word of God always present to us. We are so blessed to gather outside today and worship the risen Lord, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. So I implore you as a sinner, a man who struggles like everybody else, be smart, repent every day, embrace Jesus every day and if we live in fidelity to that word he will indeed empower us eternally with his divine life so we can do great things for god like mary does now amen amen, amen. Please stand for the creed. I forgot it was Sunday Mass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And together the creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Death was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and in the seat at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And turning to our awesome Father in heaven, we now present to him our prayers and petition. We pray for fidelity to our faith. That regardless of how weak we are, we will always go back to Jesus, repent every day, and keep seeking by his grace to live in his holy word. And for this, we pray to the Lord.
And we want to pray for all our mothers on this Mother's Day, that God will fill them with his Holy Spirit, fill them with abundant grace, and bless them with his love. And for this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And let's just pray for all the members of our family that none will ever be lost, but all come to salvation in Christ. And for this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father in heaven, please hear our prayers, for we give them to you this day to the holy love of our mother Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Be seated, please. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We sacrifice and give you the praise and glory of his name, God, give the good of all his holy church. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. With your spirit. And lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But at this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord, who is honored in your hands. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. <clears throat> Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, St. Michael the Archangel, St. Jules, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. How in the glory are you as now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Where all the little red flags are, are the stations for communion. There'll be communion ministers. They'll purify their hands. They have masks on. Please come up, make your hand like a little cup so they can drop the Holy Eucharist in there. And thank you for your cooperation. We appreciate it. God bless.
who would like to get some free holy water, it's always free, we have them in the bottles right up here. So after Mass, uh, through the closing prayer, you're welcome to come and grab some free holy water to bring home with you. Always spray your house with holy water to keep the demons out. They really do exist. Let's be smart and be humble and use the sacramentals that God gave us to sanctify our lives. Also, um, after this Mass, you're welcome to stay if you come with your, um, your picnic basket. Enjoy the beautiful grounds. You know, when my Uncle Roy bought this place about 40, 50 years ago, I guess about 50 years now, my dad in Alpaloosa, as you know, was an attorney, and my uncle was the priest. And my dad said, Roy, don't you dare pay $6,000 for that property out there in Karen Grove. <laughs> $6,000 for this property. And then it was an open field, except for two big oak trees in the back here. Jeez. Every tree you see out here, Uncle Roy planted. 50 years later, 